very important that we teach that there is not only, you know, the common language that we are familiar with, but that there is also a symbolical language and a non-verbal language. Uh, for teaching purposes, we put it together into three languages that dying patients use when they try to convey to you their own awareness of their impending death. The simplest language is plain English. If an old woman says to you, I know I have cancer and I'm not getting out of this hospital anymore, everybody knows what she's talking about, that she talks about her dying. Those patients are understood by anybody, lay people and professional people, but those are the patients who need you the least, because anybody who can talk about their own impending death in plain English is usually has come to grips with their own finiteness and is usually at least partially at peace with their own death. And that means that they end up helping you more than the other way around. The people who need help, who need our help very much, are people who are afraid to die, are children uh, who have no language to talk about dying because we raise them in a way that they are not familiar with death as a normal part of life. We have these horrible signs in the hospitals, no children are allowed in the hospital under age 14 or 16, which I find a shame. Uh, children who have to die, or adolescents who are just starting to live and then they have to die. Uh, also, young adults and patients who come into the hospital and have a very short time between an accident and their actual death. So they have very little time to come to grips with their own death. Or old people who are petrified to die. All these patients who need us terribly much use a symbolical language. And there are two kinds of symbolical languages. One is a symbolical nonverbal language that is used almost exclusively by young children between the ages of 3 and 10, and a symbolical verbal language which is used by older children, adolescents, and grown-ups. And I can give you an example of each of these languages. In order to understand the symbolical language, you have to understand what the fear of death is. Uh, most people, if I ask, what are you so afraid of, why do we feel so negative and so helpless and so petrified when we walk into a room of a dying patient well it's because they remind us that we are finite too and then i said yeah what is so terrible about that it should be beautiful because if our lifespan would not be limited you couldn't enjoy living if it would go on forever and ever and ever but people don't see it this way they are afraid of the unknown uh, some people are afraid of punishment after death I would be afraid of leaving my small children behind. Every human being has their own associations with the fear of death. But this is a very small part and almost an irrelevant part of the fear of death. The real fear of death.